there have been a lot of questions. Why yeah. sign SB 240 restricting access to uh, public uh, Look, the, uh, the, the, the legislature felt very strongly um, that, that that was never the intent of the bill, and so this was a clarifying piece for them that was important to them, so, uh, so that's why I signed the bill. Uh, this, this has always, we, we've always felt the same way, but that, that it was always optional. Um, it's important to me, and so I, I will always have and always will continue uh, to release my calendar, and that's up to every elected official if they decide they want to do that. It comes, of course, as KSL is trying to obtain access to Attorney General Sean Rice's calendar. Yeah. Do you anticipate it will impact that case? I, I don't know. Um, that certainly was not not the intention. And um, I'm, you know, I, I I would have been fine if they exempted statewide elected officials from that. Uh, fr from that, I, I told them that I have no problem if you want to make us do it. That's that's fine. Uh, I, I understand the argument for legislators uh, who are who are part time, and uh, you know, this is a, a very small part of their their lives and their livelihoods. They have. Work outside of this job, um, I, but this is my job and my full-time job, and so I, I felt like that was important. I would have been fine if they had exempted me and and the the attorney general from that. They they didn't, and so. Uh, but I, I hope that uh, that uh, elected officials will continue to release their calendars. Way back in 2011, uh, when it when another law restricting grandma was passed, uh, Governor Herbert received a lot of pressure. Um, lawmakers ended up repealing it. Do you think? Next session, lawmakers might have to again reevaluate some of the uh, transparency. Well, I, you know, I, I don't know. We'll we'll see what happens as they get feedback over the course of an election and mm -hmm. and, and the rest of the year. Sometimes that that changes their minds on things. And uh, again, that's why it's it's important for me. I, I believe transparency is a good thing, and so I'm going to continue to uh, to release my calendar. I'm sure you know if if that's something they find out is really important to voters, then uh, then they may change their minds on that one. Um, something that the Democratic caucuses have set up here is they think that the filing date, um, the candidacy filing date being moved back to before the legislative session has impacted um, some of the culture wars bills up here, some of the partisanship. Do you do you see that happening at all? And do you think that this date should remain before the legislative session? So, I, you know, I, I've been asked this and I, I, I'm not sure I have a really good answer. Um, I, I don't. I, I would probably disagree with them a little bit that it's it's changed substantially the way things are done. Um, last year was not an election year, and uh, and uh, you know there was no candidate filing deadline, and and I think they probably felt the same way about some of the culture war bills last last year. Uh, so I don't know that it's made a difference. I mean, certainly it's it, it you may be able to point to an individual case where it has where they know that somebody's running against them directly, uh, and there are probably others where they know no one's running against them or they don't have a serious challenger where that's impacted them in, in, in other ways. So I can't say definitively that it's made things different. I don't know that the perceived opponent um, is worse than the actual opponent in, in the way it impacts your behavior. So I'm, I'm pretty neutral on it right now. We'll continue to watch it and see if there's a, a major difference. But look, every two years is an election year. And uh, I, I do believe that there are differences between election year uh, uh, sessions and non-election year sessions. You kind of feel it sometimes, but, uh, but I, don't, I, I don't agree that this one is, is uh, significantly different than, than other election years. Speaking of elections, there were a lot of elections bills run this year. Not a ton yeah. of them went through. One of yeah. them would have taken power away from the lieutenant governor's office to run elections in the state. What are your thoughts on those? Sure. Um, and yeah. what do you think elections should look like going forward in the state? Does yeah. there need to be reform? Well, I, I, I really like, you know, I had the opportunity to oversee elections. I'm, I'm going to be very clear. Lieutenant governors don't run elections. That's done at the county level. I think there's a misperception there. We don't count ballots. We don't you know, send out ballots. We don't do any of that. We just help when there's an issue and uh, help with training and things like that. And so um, I'm, I, I think there was a lot of thought that went into the way our election system has been set up. Um, I think the idea of changing it quickly during a session does not make sense. I mean, if you go back and look, there were years of thought and and blue ribbon commissions that came together and really smart people that got in rooms to, to set up our, our, our election system. And so I'm, I'm proud of it. I think it works uh, pretty well, especially compared to any other state. Um, I'm, I, again, you can see that it, in an election year where there's a lot of pressure, most of those bills went nowhere. And I think that's illustrative that uh, this isn't a, a huge problem. Um, you know, it's pretty common where the legislature's budget doesn't look like your budget. Do sure. you have any particular frustrations with this budget or anything that you wish was yeah. included? You know, uh, um, honestly, if you'd asked me this question a week ago, I would have said yes, uh, but, but, I, but I, I can't say yes now. Uh, there were um, 
limitations on how much funding was available. And so certainly, you know, there, there were some areas where I would have liked to have gotten s some more funding. But the, the truth is that we got most of what we needed and what we asked for in some, some very big ways. In fact, um, exceeded our expectations and some others, especially when it comes to our starter home program, uh, 35,000 starter homes over the next five years. Um, we actually got more than we were hoping for and, and expecting. And, uh, and on homelessness, that was one that was not in the budget a week ago, that, uh, that is now, and that, that I believe will be transformational to fill in some of those gaps, uh, allow us to continue to work with Salt Lake City and others uh, to prevent unsanctioned camping, but also offer help and support and services to those who need it, and shelter more, more than anything else. That all got added in this week, and so uh, I would be very ungrateful if I complained to the legislature right now because there are a lot of bills that they passed that are not getting funded right now. Well, with that lack of funding, how do you feel about the tax cut and the way it was structured where it primarily benefits yeah. the wealthiest residents of the state? Well, I, again, it, it was not structured to benefit the wealthiest in the state, and, and that's, that's a, that's a mis complete misnomer. It's, it's what you believe in income tax. This is just an income tax decrease. If you pay income tax, you, you get a tax break. Of course, if you pay more income tax, you're going to get less than that, uh, or you're going to get more uh, of a break than, than others. This is a philosophical issue about whether income tax is a good thing or a bad thing. Um, I'm not a big fan of income tax. I, I think, as, as, um, as others have said, if you want less of something, you should tax it. And so I, I don't want less of income. I want more of income. So I think we should, we should tax it less. Um, and so that's why I've supported income tax cuts in the past. It's why I'll be signing this income tax cut. Um, the, the question is, how far do we cut the income tax? And what do we replace it with if we decide we don't want an income tax? And that's uh, earlier in the session when I talked about that. That's, that's the conversation that I was attempting to generate with the legislature. And, uh, and that message was received. And over the course of the next year or two, we will have those conversations. Are we going to keep the income tax? And if so, uh, or if not, what, what do we replace it with? If, we're, if not, where is that line? Where, when do we hit that balance? And I, I think we're getting close, but we still have a ways to go. Um, another bill that uh, brought some frustration among some mem some people in the state um, that you signed was HB 257. Um, I know you put out a statement when you signed it, but I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about some of the conversations that happened behind the scenes between the governor's office and the legislature as that bill went through a few changes. Uh, 257, sorry, the, I don't sorry, deal in numbers. There's that's the sex-based designations ah. for private spaces. And yeah, yeah, sure, thank name, you, thank you, no, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, so, so, so lots of conversations, um, and uh, th those conversations were about w what's the right balance here? Um, how, how do we achieve that? Can we can we do something that's different than what other states have done? Um, it, it was very clear that this this bill was going to move forward, and uh, that there would be a tremendous amount of support for the bill. And so, can can we get that right? So the the focus really there were two bills actually um, on this issue. Um, one of them was much more extreme. Uh, that one did not even get out of rules, which uh, which I think was was a good thing. Um, this one, uh, the the added piece around uh, unisex bathrooms, I think is is really important, and uh, making sure that that in public spaces, in new public buildings and retrofitting um, existing buildings, that we would be able to do that to get away from the issue um, and, uh, and, and make it more fair for everyone. And I think that's where we're trying to go. Uh, whether we, we achieve that balance or not, um, I think we'll, we'll learn more over the course of the next year. Um, there's also been some criticism from LGBTQ plus advocates of some of the comments you've made following the passage of that bill. And so I'm wondering if yeah. you can talk a little bit about that, where you're, you would like to see uh, policy around LGBTQ plus Utahns landing. And, yeah. and also, you know, some people express frustration that you've called yourself an ally in the past and then sure. have signed these bills. Yeah, well, well again, um, you, the, these, you, you, have, you, you have to look at things not in a vacuum. Right, you have to look at what what's happening in the legislature, and uh, and the you know the votes and the support for bills that are there or, or not there, and uh, and I, I I 
love our LGBTQ community deeply. Um, this is part of the political process. Um, when, when you have rights that come up against each other and, and about each other, um, women who, who feel um, uncomfortable uh, and, and, and in, these, in these spaces, changing spaces, as, as well as bathrooms and, uh, and the negotiations and discussions that happen there. Um, now, I, I, I have apologized for something that I said uh, uh, last week that, uh, that, that shouldn't have said and, and came out wrong. Um, met with the student, had a great conversation afterwards and had that conversation. And so, um, so yeah, I, I make mistakes and try to own up to those mistakes. And, uh, and I hope, and I've had this conversation with Equality Utah and others, that, uh, that we're, you know, we're reaching that, that kind of stasis where we, we figured out those balances and, and we can get back to um, working on other things that I think are, are far more important.